Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. Good morning, and welcome to this week's National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. We have a very interesting guest today, don't we, Lee? Oh, so interesting. I'm uh, just ready to jump out of my shoes just to talk with this gentleman. Oh, um, I don't know, Florence, there's been um, a lot of shows that we have, but this is going to be one of the ones that I, I really think that's going to be uh, educational, uh, very interesting, uh, and I guess so, I mean, it's just overwhelming with this adventurous that we have that we're going to be talking with today. Um, this, this guest uh, defines life on his own terms and encourages others to live the life that they want. And it's so uh, exciting. And I'll tell you, when, when, when these, this segment is over with, uh, we're going to really um, say, wow, it was worth the wow. So we want to welcome to our show, our guest today, um, Mr. Lonnie Bedwell. And uh, Mr. Bedwell, how are you today, sir? I am doing wonderfully simple. And thank you for having me on the show. I truly appreciate it. Thank you for being our guest, Mr. Bedwell. Well, you know, I tell you, uh, I just hate to say this, uh, but with this guest today, we can put a double S on his chest uh, <laughs> for a super, super man. Um, and he's from Duggar, Indiana. Uh, he's an Indiana product. And um, he has appeared on today's show, as well as the Steve Harvey show, which I am jealous of, <laughs> and uh, also numerous publications. And we have so much to learn from Mr. Lonnie Bedwell. And we're going to take us a short pause and let you guys get yourselves together so you can hear the adventure of Mr. Lonnie Bedwell right here on our NFB Newsline Indiana show. So stay tuned. With my failing eyesight, I'm not able to read regular newspapers and I'm not able to keep up with obituaries. I've been a homemaker all of my life, but since my vision has failed, I wish I could read my favorite magazine. Have you heard of the NFB Newsline? Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. As I travel the nation, I read NFB Newsline. I live in Valparaiso, Indiana, and I listen to my local news on NFB Newsline. As a student, I enjoy reading current events on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today. to this segment of the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana. And as Lee mentioned, our guest today is Mr. Lonnie Bedwell, who is a veteran and has a very interesting life story. So again, Lonnie, welcome to our show. Thank you again. And I, I, I truly don't believe that that SS stands for simply silly instead of... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, tell you, Lonnie. <laughs> well, Lonnie, tell us a little bit about you. Um, were you born in um, 
Dublin, Indiana? Yeah, I was I was born in uh, back here at home where I'm at now in Sullivan County, Indiana. Okay. It's south of Terre Haute a little bit. Uh, I lived as raised in a little town of Pleasantville, population 120, if you count the dogs and the chickens and some of the pigs and stuff. <laughs> and uh, graduated high school, local high school of Duggar. Attended Vincennes University for a couple of years uh, in electronics and robotics program. And then I decided to join the, the Navy. Uh, and I enlisted in the Navy as a nuclear powered machinist mate. Uh, and then I volunteered for submarine service. I tell you, Lonnie, just just that alone uh, is very interesting. Now, you say you come from a, a, a town of how many people? What's the 120. population? 120. So when you went to Vincennes, I mean, that was like going to big time, right? Oh, that's a big city, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There were more people in the dorm than there was in my hometown. <laughs> Well, Lonnie, um, now, how old were you when you decided that you wanted to um, join the military? I was 20 years old. Yeah, I was 20 years old, just completed uh, my associate's degree in college. And uh, um, I just, I needed a job and I need to find something. You know, at that time, it was kind of tough. And I had, you know, a, a history of people in my family in the military for pretty much every every conflict since you know, World War II and probably beyond that, Civil War and everything else, uh, you name it, uh, um, all the way up through. And you know, I thought, well, I'm just going to join the service. You know, it, I wanted to serve the country, plus I needed a little bit of uh, experience, if you will. And so that's what I decided to do. Lonnie, I know that in a lot of cases well, that I've heard of, guys will kind of make a pact together. Okay, I'm going to join the military. And how about you? Is that something that you did while you were in, um, in college? Or is it just something that you just decided, okay, I'm, I'm just going to do this on my own? I, I just decided to do it on my own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And Lonnie, what would you say to an individual, a young man today? Uh, that may be contemplating uh, uh, this life change, uh, would you recommend or encourage him to uh, the military? Yeah, you know, I really would. I would encourage him to join in, in all the branches. But the one thing I would, I would encourage them to do uh, is to try to go into a field that will correspond to something in the civilian world, if you will. You know, try to try to get a little bit of an education or training within the military while you're doing it. Uh, that'd be my only thing, which quite honestly, in today's military, pretty much everything uh, you know, gives you an education and in whether communication, electronics, truck driving, nursing, you, you name it. And uh, uh, so I, I would recommend it. I truly do. And it gives you a little bit of world experience and uh, life experience. Now, do you foresee a, a moment in our history, future history, where blind folks can serve more in the military? Oh, I totally do. I know some uh, blind veteran friends of mine who actually stayed in after they lost their eyesight uh, long enough to reach their 20-year retirement. And what capacities do, uh, do you recall that they may have served in? It, more of an administrative capacity. You know, these computers, as you guys well know, they can plug them in with uh, you know, JAWS, for example, or Window Eyes, different software that can make it accessible to us. And there's absolutely no reason why a blind person could not serve their country in the military. Well, that is something that we need to look more into and um, make sure that uh, blind people can have those opportunities. Um, now, as you served in the military, um, you, you were a petty officer? Yeah, I was a petty officer first class, which mm -hmm. is an E6 uh, when, I, when I got out. Okay. So there's magazines that we have out there since we're talking about NFB Newsline uh, for um, the military veterans that you might want, they might want to take a look at. 
and that is uh, uh, Stars and Stripes and also the VFW Magazine. There's a plethora of information in there, Lonnie, and I just encourage you to check that out as well during your times of travel. Yeah, I, uh, I, I do get the, the American Legion Magazine and the VFW Magazine already here at the house. So, uh, so I already have those access. I, do, I don't get the Stars and Stripes, so I need to look into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So are you accessing those through your computer? I can. Yeah, I do. And then also, they also give me a, a printed copy, which, you know, I can actually take, you know, the iPhone and snap a picture and, and read it. And that's a, a great feature that we have with the NFB Newsline as well. Uh, that's uh, free. Um, the uh, NFB um, KNFB Reader. Uh, mm -hmm. basic and it does the same thing there so I think you'll really enjoy that and uh, just enjoy reading that um, the NFB Newsline period. Uh, I'm also so a member of the Blinded Veterans Association and get a lot of documents from them and emails and stuff and I encourage people who are blind veterans to, to really look into that and join if nothing else you know just just for the information like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So many things out there that are available to them. So many things that they want to try to support legislatively. It's just good information. And when we're talking about blinded veterans, um, uh, there's also training uh, for individuals that um, are blind. Um, you want to talk about some of that training that blind veterans can receive? Yeah, I, uh, I really encourage any veteran who, who loses their eyesight, and people have to realize this, they do not have to be a combat injured veteran or blinded veteran or a veteran who lost their eyesight as a result of uh, their service. Anybody who served in the National Guard, to the active duty, you name it, any of the reserves or guards or active duty, it, and has lost their eyesight due to disease, you name it, is eligible for this program. And I encourage them to, to get a hold of their VA, to reach out to the Blinded Veterans Association and whoever they need to, and get equipped, get in, in the circle, if you will, and then go to one of these blind rehab centers. Uh, I think there's 13 of them throughout the United States and Puerto Rico now. And it's uh, when you go, they're called BRCs or blind rehab centers. You can go up there initially for like six to eight weeks and, and get living skill training, uh, manual skills training, uh, orientation mobility training, get, and go back and get uh, training on computers and technology. And it's, it's just an amazing programs that you can go and uh, learn and then, then get this equipment. You know, as, as a blinded veteran, it's truly a major benefit to get hooked up with this because like, you know, a cane, a cane, you get a cane, it's free, you know, or, or computers, or cell phones, quite honestly, uh, an iPhone is, is something that can be issued to a blind veteran as a prosthetic tool, just like a leg is to, to an amputee. So uh, absolutely encourage you to get involved, reach out to, to the folks here on this uh, publication and, or to any other blind veteran out there. Well, thank you so much for that information, Lonnie. And uh, we want to encourage those uh, that are here in Indiana. <clears throat> you can also reach uh, Deanna Austin at the uh, Broderbush VA Hospital. Uh, she's our service team, um, uh, visual impairment service team coordinator. And she's been on the show before. So I would say, uh, check that out and it'll give you a level of uh, encouragement, independence and uh, self-reliance. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna take a short pause and we're gonna come back and talk some more about uh, Mr. Lonnie Bedwell and some of his uh, uh, adventures. Uh, some of them are very extreme, so stay tuned. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. 
Dad, you're a Jerusalem Post, too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It's the life you want. Read NFB Newsline. It's free. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I am a CFP practitioner and I happen to be blind. I rely on NFB Newsline to keep me current with Wall Street Journal and the Financial Times. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We're speaking with Lonnie Bedwell from Dugger, Indiana. And Lonnie, um, let's talk a little bit more about you. And uh, let's say when you were in the military, um, you married while you were in the military, correct? Yeah, I was married and I ended up having three daughters, Courtney, Ashley, and Taylor, better known to me as Court, Peanut, and Bug. Tell us a little bit more about your family. Um, in, before you start with that, I, I don't know whether you've had an opportunity, and we're always talking about NFB Newsline, you know that there's some magazines there. Um, we have the Parents Magazine, and we have magazines for Girls Life, so you said you had three daughters. I know that it's probably a little bit too late for you to read up on those, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, tell us a little bit more about your family life. Yeah, like I said, those three girls, and um, um, you know, that was all born while I was in the service. And um, when I was, uh, uh, had my accident, they were five, nine, and 11 uh, years old. And now they are, what is it, 29, 33, and 35. That was, that accident was 24 years ago. And, uh, I ended up as a single father after the accident. And I ended up raising the, the three girls uh, by myself. And that's a big reason why I didn't go to a blind rehab center for such a long time. I didn't go to blind rehab center until my youngest daughter graduated high school. And yeah. Okay. Now how instrumental uh, was it, you know, as far as for your daughters, for you to uh, go to the blind rehab center? I mean, I know that there had to be something in your life that prompted you to go ahead and uh, take advantage of that. Well, I, um, like I said, I, I didn't go until the girls were out of school because um, I didn't want to take that time frame. which in hindsight, I wish I would have because I learned so much. But what prompted me to go is once my youngest daughter was graduating, I knew that I needed to be uh, more independent than I already was. So I needed some more skills. So I decided to go up there and it's mainly in the technology world. I needed to, to get access to the computers and, and all this technology and learn how to do some of this stuff more on my own. So that's when I finally went up there and uh, it was huge. Like I said, it would have been, it would have been extremely beneficial for me to have went earlier. I just wasn't smart enough to realize that. Well, Lonnie, you talk about, um, you know, the technologies and you have a lot of interest and so adventurous. Um, it is rumored that you taught your girls how to drive. Well, as long as there's no police listening to this or if there's a statute of limitations, then that rumor might be validated. <laughs> if there's any, if, if I'm not past the statute of limitations then I'm not gonna to admit to it, but no, I, I uh, I truly did. Uh, I it started. I had an old Ford F one fifty pickup truck, the uh, stick shift, and I literally I'd put them on my lap and take off, and they'd steer. I'd do the clutch and the brake and the gas. I'd roll the window down, put it in four wheel drive, low, so I couldn't get going too fast. And I just listened to the sound of the weeds and the rev of the engine, and we'd drive around this pasture behind the house. And as they got older and older, they you know took on more of the responsibility of the clutch and the brake and the gas. And, when they got good enough, we took off down the county roads. And when they really got good enough, they occasionally let me drive. 
<laughs> well, I guess you had a lot of space and not too many pedestrians uh, in a town so small, less than 200 people. Yeah. So that is great. You know, we, we also have a magazine that uh, um, people can check out and it's called Car and Driver Magazine. So you may want to check that out too, as uh, I'm, I like to check that out some more myself. Yeah. Now, um, in 1997, um, you had a life changing moment. You want to talk to us about that? Share that with us. Yeah, that was, it was May the 4th, uh, three years to the day that I got off of active duty. Uh, and me and a good friend of mine decided to go do a little turkey hunting before church. And uh, I had harvested a bird the day before. So I was just simply out there calling for him. And we'd separated intentionally and was to kind of work our way back together. I don't think either one of us realized how it happened, but uh, he was a lifelong friend. Uh, we was raised within three miles of each other our whole, our whole life. And then I went to the Navy and a little bit after that, he joined the Navy as a corpsman and was attached to the Marines. And, and after we'd both got out back here, uh, anyway, we was, I was literally a mile from the house. And, and uh, I don't think we know what happened. It's really thick and dense. And he saw a turkey and, uh, and I took a full shotgun blast to the face at about nine steps. Mm -hmm. And uh, while my head was kind of ringing and pounding and I realized what had happened, he leaned me up against a tree, took his finger and cleared my airway and ran for help. He, you know, oh my he's, goodness. I'm fortunate to be alive. I had over 85 pellets up in my face and head and stuff. They, uh, the surgeons, they, they told me that by the time I got there, you know, put me in a stretcher, took me across the stripper hills, put me in a boat from a boat to an ambulance, an ambulance to a helicopter. And then they uh, flew me up to Indianapolis. Uh, yeah, I think I you Methodist, I don't even remember at this point. And, uh, you know, the doctors told me, said they don't know how I was alive, but they kind of rebuilt part of my nose and throat. And here I am. But the thing I want to say more than anything about that is, that I'm so pleased about is me and the gentleman I was in the hunting accident with are still really good friends to this day. And we still hunt together, fish together. And uh, that speaks volumes to his character. It does. It, it and, really does. And, and volumes to your courage as well to continue to be hunting and being blind. Yeah. So we're going to take a, a pause and come back and talk more with Mr. Lonnie Bedwell and some of his adventures and some of the things that he's done uh, as, uh, as a human being and how he is serving mankind. So stay tuned. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind, and we read NFB Newsline. Thousands of Indiana residents feel isolated from the world due to vision problems. Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I'm blind. I read Stars and Stripes on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline, experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read 
The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. Welcome back to the conclusion of our show, and we're speaking with Lonnie Bedwell. And um, Lonnie, we are doing a uh, going to do another show on you. But do you have any words that you would like to leave for our listening and viewing audience today? Well, please come back and listen. You, know, I like to refer to myself as LOL cute. Lights out, Lonnie, who likes to laugh out loud with lots of love, and uh, I've got a pretty interesting story going forward. Well, we'll be looking forward to that story, and we want our viewers and listeners to join us next week with Mr. Lonnie Bedwell, so you can uh, laugh out loud, and you can also learn how to be encouraged from such an encouraging person. So stay tuned and with us um, next week, and we'll be looking forward to your presence, because we we have a lot, uh, so much more to share with Mr. Lonnie Bedwell, and you don't want to miss it. Talk to you next week. Thank Take you. good care. National Federation of the Blind, Newsline, Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want. I have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day... One man's dream of racial equity and harmony. Unity, seeing people as people, created in the image of God is central to the Christian message. Acts records, from one man he made every nation of men. God did this so men would seek him. Celebrate the creation, celebrate the vision, and celebrate each other as God celebrates you. With this faith, I will go out with you and transform dark yesterdays into bright tomorrows. With this faith, we will be able to achieve this new day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing with the Negroes in the spiritual of all, free at last, free at last. Thank God, Almighty.